Hello, today we are here to discuss about chronic periodontitis. In today's lecture, we are going to cover the definition of chronic periodontitis, different clinical features and radiographic features of chronic periodontitis, how they are classified and various important points regarding need. So, let us start from what is chronic periodontitis. As we all know, Chronic periodontitis is the infectious disease of the periodontium which results in inflammation of the supporting tissues of the teeth and progressive attachment and bone loss. So, periodontitis is the infectious disease which results in inflammation of the supporting tissues of the teeth, support, supporting tissues of the teeth leading to attachment loss and bone loss. Attachment loss and bone loss. This peri chronic periodontitis is also known as slowly progressing periodontitis slowly progressing periodontitis and Riggs disease this name was given to chronic periodontitis in 1980 so the different clinical features of chronic periodontitis are because uh, the uh, because of the accumulation of supragingival and subgingival plaque and calculus, the gingiva becomes inflamed. So, its color changes from coral pink to deep red. Various gingival inflammation is seen. The color of the gingiva becomes from pale red to magenta. It bleeds easily on probing. The patient may complain of foul smell from the mouth. There may be superation from the gingiva, recession of the teeth. Mobility is seen, furcation involvement is seen. These are the various complaints with the patient comes to the dentist. So, the clinical features because of the supragingival and subgingival plaque are gingival inflammation. This condition is usually painless and the color of the gingiva changes from pale red to magenta. There is loss of stippling. Loss of stippling means the orange peel appearance which is seen into the gingiva is lost because of gingival inflammation. The margins of the gingiva are rolled out. It bleeds easily on probing. Whenever periodontal probe is inserted, it bleeds within 10 seconds. Exudation or superation may also be present. This superation consists of accumulation of neutrophils. Accumulation of neutrophils which are the primary cells to come at the site of inflammation. Apart from this, there is presence of deep periodontal pockets, loss of attachment and alveolar bone loss. Now, there might some sometimes in gingival inflammation, there might be fibrotic changes seen. The fibrous gingiva does not allow one to view the low grade inflammation that might be present into the gingiva. The fibrotic changes obscure the low grade inflammation that is present into the gingiva. Thus, it is very difficult whether gingivitis and periodontitis are present or not. Also, in severe cases, tooth mobility is seen in cases of periodontitis. Now, let us see the radiographic features of bone loss. Radiographic features of chronic periodontitis. In radiographic features, the most important thing, thing that is seen is the bone loss. The bone loss has two patterns horizontal bone loss and vertical bone loss. This horizontal bone loss is most frequently associated with supra bony pockets. Supra bony pockets. And this vertical bone loss is associated with angular defects, angular defects and infra bony pockets. Infra bony pockets. Apart from this, there may be disintegration of the lamina dura. There will be thinning of lamina, lamina dura. Thinning of lamina dura in radiographic appearance. Lamina dura. The bone may appear fuzzy. Fuzzy appearance of bone. Appearance of bone may also be seen during periodontitis. Now, let us see the distribution of chronic periodontitis. Chronic periodontitis is a site specific disease like it is seen in the cases where there is heavy deposits of calculus and plaque present. Thus, the <coughs> we can say that chronic periodontitis, the bone loss and attachment loss is consistent with the local factors that are present. This is in opposed with the aggressive periodontitis. In aggressive periodontitis, as we know, the local factors uh, 
uh, are not consistent with the amount of attachment loss, loss and bone loss seen. So, this is the thus we can say that chronic periodontitis is a site specific disease. Also, now let us go and into the classification of chronic periodontitis. Chronic periodontitis is classified as localized periodontitis and generalized periodontitis. Localized periodontitis is when less than 30 percent of the site are affected with chronic periodontitis. Less than 30 percent of the sites show attachment loss and bone loss. And in generalized chronic periodontitis, more than 30 percent of the sites show attachment and bone loss. Chronic periodontitis is also classified based on the attachment loss as mild, moderate and severe forms. Now, before going into these forms, let us know what is clinical attachment loss. Suppose this is the tooth and this is the periodontal pocket. So, the distance from where the, when we are measuring the pocket depth, the apical penetration, this is the probe. So, the distance till where the pe uh, probe is penetrating and the gingival margin. The distance from the gingival margin to the penetration, apical penetration of the probe is known as the pocket depth. This is the pocket depth. But when we are calculating the clinical attachment loss, it is from calculated from the CEJ plus the pocket depth. So, CEJ from CEJ up to the apex of the gingival margin, this is the recession. So, recession plus the pocket depth is the clinical attachment loss. Clinical attachment loss is equal to recession which is from the cemento enamel junction to tip of the gingival margin, gingival margin and plus pocket depth which is from the tip of the gingival margin to the apical penetration of the probe. This is the clinical attachment loss. Now, if the clinical attachment loss is not more than 1 to 2 millimeter, it is classified as mild or slight periodontitis. If the clinical attachment loss is between 3 to 4 mm, then it is known as moderate periodontitis and if it is more than 5 mm, if the clinical attachment loss is more than 5 mm, then it is classified as severe form of periodontitis. So, let us discuss some of the important points regarding MCQs. Chronic periodontitis was formerly known as adult periodontitis because it was believed that it occurs in patients with more than 30 years of age. So, it was known as adult periodontitis, but now it has been seen that it is not age related disease. However, Chronic periodontitis is most commonly seen with increasing age. It can also be seen in children. Also, it was known as slowly progressing periodontitis because of its slow rate of disease progression as well as chronic adult periodontitis. Apart from these names, it is also known as Riggs disease. Riggs disease. We all know as we have discussed before, chronic periodontitis is age associated disease. It is not age related. We cannot define a certain age associated with chronic periodontitis. We cannot say that patients with more than 30 years of age only will have chronic periodontitis. Even younger patients can be affected with chronic periodontitis. So, you have to remember that it is age associated disease, but not age related disease. Now, patients in whom polymorphisms of interleukin 1 is seen are more susceptible to chronic periodontitis. So, polymorphi polymorphisms polymorphism in relation to interleukin 1 increases the susceptibility of an individual to chronic periodontitis. Increases susceptibility of an individual of an individual to chronic periodontitis. Now, a pers person in whom there is genetic susceptibility present, but he is also a smoker, then the chances of chronic periodontitis increases to 7.7 .7 times. This you have to remember because this frequently comes during MCQs. Ke what, what are the chances in a smoker and with genetic uh, polymorphism in interleukin 1 
of chronic patients with chronic periodontitis. There are 7.7 .7 times increased chances of chronic periodontitis in patients with genetic susceptibility of interleukin 1 and smokers. And in smokers, there are 4 times more chances of chronic periodontitis than in non-smokers. Let us discuss some questions regarding chronic periodontitis. The first question is, periodontitis is usually severe in patients with Number first option is patients taking phenytoin. As we all know, phenytoin is the one of the major cause of drug induced gingival en enlargement. So, drug induced gingival enlargement is caused by phenytoin. It is one of the enlargement is caused by phenytoin. It is mostly in patients who are taking epilepsy. Patients with epilepsy taking phenytoin are more prone for drug induced gingival enlargement. The second option is with defective neutrophils. Yes. Chronic periodontitis. It is found that patients presenting with chronic periodontitis show poly, uh, defects in their neutrophil migration. N defect in neutrophilic migration. Neutrophil migration at the inflamed site is seen. So, this can be the option, one of the correct options. The third option is patients with bruxism. Patients with bruxism shows mostly TFO, trauma from occlusion and the bone loss that is present is mostly angular in these patients. In these patients, it is not necessarily, it is not necessary that they always present with periodontitis. So, this option is not correct. The fourth option and the last option is periodontitis is usually severe in patients with overcrowding. Yes, in patients with overcrowding, increased accumulation of plaque and calculus is present. Plaque and calculus is present. But it is not always necessary that overcrowded teeth will result in periodontitis. So, the option second. Second option is patients with defective neutrophils mostly presents with chronic periodontitis. Now, periodontal attachment loss is measured clinically from the first option is from the gingival margin to the base of the pocket. Now, from the gingival margin to the base of the pocket is what? It is the pocket depth. Pocket depth is measured from the gingival margin to the base of the pocket. The second option is from CEJ to the gingival margin. From CEJ to the gingival margin, what we measure is the recession. And the third option, from CEJ to the base of the pocket. Yes, from the cemento enamel junction up to the apical penetration of the periodontal probe, what is recorded is the clinical attachment loss. So, the answer to this question is third. From CEJ to the base of the pocket is the clinical attachment loss. Thank <laughs> you.